big hello to our Highlights Foundation family. We are so happy to have you with us. Um, and for those that may not know, I'm Kat Galliano. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the social media manager for the Highlights Foundation, mm -hmm. joining you from Westchester, New York, on the traditional lands of the Siwanoi people. Apart from all the fun things I get to do at the Highlights Foundation, I'm also a writer and a reader who is very excited to have this lunchtime chat with our friends, hosts, and special guests, Ashley Wolf and Meryl Rainey, who will be hosting our working retreat, uh, working but playful retreat <laughs> uh, called Artistic Play and Exploration, taking place on our campus next month, April 14th through the 17th. And before we dive in, I just want to remind our viewers that joining in on in any Highlights Foundation sessions to do so with no hate, no harm, and no harassment of any kind. Now let's get started. So my first question for you is for Ashley. Ashley, you and Denise were pretty adamant about including playing as part of this working retreat title. Just want to remind people that Denise uh, Flemings is also going to be host on the retreat on this retreat who could not join us, but will definitely be live in person. Oh, there she is. There she is. <laughs> Good one, Meryl. She's here. <laughs> Never mind. Scratch She's not She's without here. us. Yes. Good. Thank you. So Denise will be on campus and also here in pillow form, which is this even so, so epic. <laughs> so uh, you and Denise were pretty adamant about including playing that word in the working retreat title. And for both of you, um, or sorry, why is that? Why was that so important to include that word playful in the title? Well, both Denise and I are, you know, work, work hard, play harder type of girls. So, um, but uh, my, from my point of view, it's that you know, when we're in a workshop environment like that, we want to be bonded with each other and have camaraderie. And I think play is a way, much better way to create that atmosphere than, than just teacher-student relationships. So we started doing games and um, equalizing exercises where everybody gets to bond with everybody else. And, you know, we've had the same group of women, mostly women, come back year after year after year just to see the people they met the first mm. in the first workshop, and hopefully us too. So, and Denise's um, response, which she sent me, was that it opens up paths to creativity that you just never know what's going to come up in when you apply play to work. And so we both believe that experimentation and um, not worrying about mistakes, goofing around is a good way to approach artwork. That's awesome. And I also want to tell people that like the working retreat model, we have been sort of quietly putting into play since the tail end of last year. So, cause we just heard so much from all our, our, our people that have frequented campus about wanting a place where they can learn, but also take time to write. So this is why we sort of re created what our, our workshops were on campus and, and sort of modeled them after this working retreat style um, to allow people to, um, sorry, I'm reading the comments that Denise had as a hit from everyone. So <laughs> to allow people to get together that community part, also have that writing part, have that community part, but also have that learning time. So it's like a nice little mix of all those things. Um, and I guess for both of you, how does play make its way into your creative process? Yeah. Well, Meryl, why, Actually, do you, why don't you go ahead? Do you want me to go ahead? Okay. Well, it, it, um, it, it plays a huge impact for me. I, I think it was, I mean, it's been quite a few years for me now that, um, doing commercial illustration work for so long, it got really stagnant mm -hmm. and, um, I was going through some rough periods of life happenings and I needed to, to figure out how to get out of a rut. And so I started picking up different, looking at what other people were working with and just started playing with different medium to try and get out of that rut. And that led me down a whole nother, it took me from the commercial world that I was sitting in into a whole nother world where I was playing with collage and cut paper and markers and pencils and everything out of the, every day. And just that act of playing and creating um, really pulled me out of the slump that I was in and took me in directions I would have never thought of, you know, and, and I'm an individual who I've always liked to build with my hands. And mm -hmm. so it just made, as they started diving more into it, it just made more sense why that needed to happen. So it definitely, 
definitely something they keep in the practice all the time and actually looking forward to it in April as well because I feel like I'm back in some of that slump again so mm -hmm. I'm like I can't wait and Denise brought up to me that we're going to be doing attitude dancing and so <laughs> the to break uh some of the uh to get some of the creativity mojo going is the way she put it to me I was like all right let's see what that's all about <laughs> i like it Ooh, i'm so jelly for those of you that are attending because that sounds like a lot of fun <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well i and i'm going to chime in and say that i have never been able to stick to one style in my in my entire career and i yeah. just turned 40 in my in my book career um i've used at least five or six different mediums for books over the years that's which awesome. has made um critics kind of crazy but i you know i couldn't i can't stick to one style and one look and one set of tools i think that would be really boring yeah, That's yeah so I'll, cool. I'll i'll second that I, I i think it's one of those things where it's like you want to have your work noticeable but at the same time if a particular medium adds so much more energy and life to a project why would you hesitate to to go that route um, yeah and just, just because just because you come become famous like denise did for pouring paper <laughs> doesn't mean that she stuck with it yeah um for she, sure. you know she she's she's branched out in the same way and and done things that um that grabbed her creative imagination rather than trying to stick to the same style throughout her career yeah. i think also that's just the beauty of being an artist that like you really just want to be able to try different things and see what works, what doesn't, or and play around. And like you said, Meryl, like yeah. I, I love what you just said. Like if, if a project feels like it should be in a certain way, like why not try that? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a weird, and I think Ashley would agree with this too, but I think there's a weird connectivity when you can feel a pencil dragging across paper or the way certain paints go oh, yeah. down yeah. or you do a wash <laughs> or whatever you're doing with, with the technique, but those, um just those tactile feels of the uh tools that you're using have so much power in itself so um, yeah i second that totally and very anal very analog here yeah. yep as the non-illustrator in the room i just want to <laughs> say that like when i <laughs> when i do take out when i have the need to like you know play around i love taking out my colored pencils and just like you know my coloring books that i have and just yeah. going in and there's something so different about just seeing those colors on the page and even if i'm drawing a stick figure i'm just like oh wow look the stick figure looks so much more better because it has all these multicolors on it so yeah. that's so cool yeah. that you shared that well and, um yeah I, and I don't i don't know about you meryl but yeah. i know denise and i agree that ai is going to totally change children's book illustration and that being able to do something with your own hands that looks like it was made with your own hands mm -hmm. is going to be twice as valuable as it was oh, yeah. before yeah, this. Totally because, agree with you know, that. Here's some beautiful digital work done, but if if it looks like it was done with artificial intelligence, then hmm, I don't think people are going to like it. I hope they don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so just to sort of touch on that too, since uh, kind of kind of skewing from our questions, yeah. <laughs> it's true because like I'm I'm again not the illustrator in the room, but I am a traveler, and so when I do travel, I love to to buy pieces from artists that you can tell yeah. that it was made by hands. Yeah. So like I love that you shared that, even though it's not in our questions, but yeah. I, I I think it's so important to to touch on it because like I'm as a traveler, I'm looking for like something that the artist made, you can tell it was made, you know, you can see the slight imperfections of right. whatever it is that, you know, happened on the, on the, the print or whatnot, or, or wood piece or whatnot. So I'm like, that's, that's cool that you touched on that. So um, we'll just have to stay tuned to see what AI does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it doesn't so. do. <laughs> or doesn't do exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to jump into our second yeah. question, which is, we also like um, how the process of play or learning something new can make its way into your work, even if it's uh, if if the technique itself doesn't appear, or when a spark of inspiration makes its way into your brain, gives you a new angle on a project. Can you recall a specific time that happened to you, or for you? Um, sure. 
Um, well, <laughs> my story is kind of weird. Back in the 80s, 90s, I was doing a lot of work for a company called Joe Boxer out in San Francisco. And it was <laughs> fa fabric design um, work where you had to use gouache in very um, limited color set yeah. designs. And it was completely opaque. And I had never touched gouache in my life. I was all about watercolor. And, and I was using it in the correct way, flat, matte, solid. But I still had those paints around. And one day I just maybe picked them up and started using them like watercolor and realized that, oh, watercolor doesn't hold a candle to gouache when it comes to a lot of the um, superpowers. Like you can paint a picture in gouache, run it, let it dry, run it underwater, and it will not wash away. Mm. It's, it stains the paper in a totally different way. So awesome. I became a convert, and um, that was, I think, just a happy accident. And Denise would okay. like to in, insert her um, aha moment, which was when she was pouring paper at the beginning. And if for those of you who don't know what pouring paper is, you you mash up paper pulp and you dye it, and then you strain it through a screen. And once it's dry, it's like it's handmade paper. Mm -hmm. But Denise figured out a way to make designs and even very intricate illustrations using this technique. Um, but she was pouring layers on top of each other and she realized that the bottom layer would create an outline around the top layer. And so if you look at her work, you'll see a lot of books that have kind of a beautiful cobalt blue border mm -hmm. around shapes. Yeah. yeah. And that's, a, I believe that's how she came to that. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that's a beautiful yeah. part of her work because that, when that was my first experience with Denise's work was here at our local library, they had a show for one of her books and all of her original paper pulps. Oh. And that was before her and I had met in wow. person, like years. Yeah. So being able to see those, I was like, holy cow, like these are like amazing. But you know, those, those techniques that yeah. cobalt, I, I exactly know what you're talking about with that cobalt blue kind of outline that kind of it appears around all the different shapes and, and elements in there. But you um, think, think that maybe she put it on with a little tiny squeeze bottle, but yeah. it makes way more sense to think that you know, the top layer just sort of spread out to where it was still outlined in blue yep. by the bottom yep. layer. Uh, the, the question that I would have for her, if she was here with us in real time person, um, it would be, I wonder how how many iterations she had to take the mm -hmm. once she found out what was happening to perfect it yeah. into, her, into her work. You know, that would be a cool... Yeah. Um, how much how much yeah. practice yeah and yeah. you can't you can't emphasize that enough can you no you really can't yeah Especially just practice 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 and if you don't like it throw it away and start again because start you will you'll, you will have learned something yes i agreed 100 percent. yeah um and i come up from a little bit different way because i work both traditionally and digital um but my my workflow when i work digital was that if I had never drawn with a pencil before, I would never understand how a digital graphite pencil should work and how the graphite should build upon each other or how the water, you know, if you're doing washes with watercolors, if you've never done a real wash with the watercolor paints yeah. before, you would have no idea how to do it digitally. And so I think the people that are tr currently working digitally um, have all had these same experiences, right? They At some point in time in their career, they painted with paints and everything else so they truly understood how the medium should work and if you don't have these times to experiment or play like i love drawing with crayola crayons um mm -hmm. because i love the 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 thick line that comes down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then just that kind of like primitive feel of the way that the lines come out with right but there but there was there would be no way to replicate that i think from a digital standpoint if you would have never done that traditionally right because mm -hmm. yeah. then you have to kind of figure out a way to make it feel like it should and sometimes it's just easier just to use the crayon you know as opposed to <laughs> well yeah because <laughs> you know is it speed or is it is it i mean what's what's our ultimate goal with digital is it speed or is it um the ability to you know just keep changing your layers yeah 
mean, it, it, there are yeah. lots of different reasons to use it, but I do believe you're right that it helps to know how to make the analog mark yep. before you try to make it in digital. Yeah, and you bring up a good point, Ashley, in the sense of that, you know, if you're creating digital work, but if you had worked in it traditionally, you know the limitations, right? So you're not like, you know, you, you have the capabilities of zooming in or adding 100 layers or editability or whatever, but if you can limit your technique because you know what the limitations are of that technique, um, I think adds so much to the work as well. Yeah, and I, and I love the idea of mixing it. Do you mix yeah. yours? I mean, do you do a lot of stuff on paper and then translate it into digital? It depends on the project. Some mm -hmm. stuff is like that. Some, you know, the, my recent book with Holiday House, Giants are Very, Very People, it's a combination of um, what I learned from doing years of cut paper work mm -hmm. on top of merging um, pencil lines. I was using a real soft, uh, like 8B black wing pencil. So it was like wow. butter going down yeah. on um, <laughs> cards, you know what I mean? Yeah. But but there was no there was no way to digitally replicate the way that mm -hmm. that pencil came down on the paper. And then when I brought it all together in Photoshop, how the even the transparency of where the pencil skipped going across the Bristol board could still be seen like with a, a color fill underneath of it. So, cool, cool. so so there are some like really cool things. I think I think yeah. there's a good way you can work them both. Um, but you know, I don't, you know, I, I also come from the background of, you know, there's no right or wrong way to to create artwork, right? But but there's something to those traditional tools that you just can't you can't get away from or replicate in any form or fashion unless you're just putting it on paper, you know, putting it down um, with it, so. So listen, I'm gonna have to make a call uh, to, to the programming team and beg them to let me come because I am so like fascinated by everything you're talking about. So people, you better sign up you know, or else Kat, I'll take your spot. Yeah, we would love to have you because one of the, one of our, our primary founding principles was that you do not need to be an artist to come yes yeah. um you don't need to consider yourself an artist we think everybody has that that ability and i think a lot of people are really traumatized by things that happened to them in first mm -hmm. grade or mm -hmm. you know third <laughs> grade when their teacher told them oh no that's not right you know the sky is never red or whatever um and that we we're in order to get over that it helps to come to one of these workshops where you know it is play and it is hugely accepting but we will throw all sorts of new techniques at you with new tools and i'm going to teach how to use gouache three ways that's cool i'm <laughs> and, excited about and, this uh, so <laughs> i mean talk about economical you just need the same paint same paper and you can get three completely different looks yeah that's all awesome. that's awesome and thank you for pointing that out because it is important like if, if you have not read through the description on the website it is so important to realize this is not just for like super accomplished illustrators or illustrators in general or anyone who knows how to draw like i am zero in no. that department so it is important to to stress that out, it is a place to play and to just have fun and learn different things and and create with our hands and just yep. learn and have fun and be in community. And, and um, if you've never been to Highlights, um, I know so many people have, but it has got the best food on the planet. <laughs> it is such a great place to, to go. You get fed beautiful meals three times a day and you stay in a really cute cabin or a room in the inn and and the grounds are beautiful. The daffodils will probably be in full swing by then. That's awesome. Um, I can't wait. And I love, no, I I love going just, there in the spring. I was joking around, how, what a better way to spend a week than to eat homemade cookies yeah. and make artwork, right? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know and the weather will be nice cream, so you though. can go on yes. walks so you won't feel bad that you had cookies every day for lunch. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, there's hills. You can, you can climb hills on walks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So our my final question for you both is, what do you hope that people will leave the retreat with in their journey to inspire kids through story? Um, I don't know, Meryl, you go. All right. I, 
I think I would, I, I hope that people, um, kind of piggybacking on what Ashley was just saying is to know that they can, you know, whether they're an illustrator or an artist or not at currently, that by the time that they leave, that they know that they can create artwork, um, by everything that they've been shown, be inspired to be able to create, uh, yeah, I think be inspired to be able to create whether you are an artist or not an artist um because i think there's a you know just you know when i when i work with kids i try to point out um you know you can create artwork with colors and shapes right and which are such a uh primary thing to all of us but once you kind of get that concept in your head of how to use circles and squares and triangles and rectangles and you know what i yeah. mean like um it kind of cuts out them feeling intimidated to where they feel like they would have to pick up a pencil and be able to draw this beautiful portrait or whatever. But if you take the pencil out and you give them shapes to work with, they can create just as what just as beautiful of a portrait of themselves with colors and shapes yeah, as I, they would. I totally agree. Yeah. Collage is so such a forgiving medium and it, it allows you to really make something beautiful without yeah. with just a pair of scissors and some glue. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what Denise is going to do. She's going to, yep. her title is, If You Glue It, It Will Stick. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And, and awesome. what are you going to do, Meryl? Um, uh, I'm going to do uh, 3D constructions. Um, and so my my hope is, is to be able to um, piggyback on both what you and Denise are teaching technique-wise and then work with everybody in terms of building a like a 3D diorama based on the technique that they have. So give some, yeah. um, uh, some instruction on how to build some like dioramas and props and characters, but in a dimensional way. And then let the technique, the other techniques that they've learned to be able to add all their colors and textures yeah. and yeah. Um, collage elements too. So really trying to kind of bring everything that we've learned that week, like all the way come around. Um, to the end and really have uh have fun building some things so i have my friend james back here he's my big giant dinosaur okay. that travels with me. he'll probably be <laughs> at highlights with us just because i'm yeah i'll be driving so i have uh, <laughs> the flexibility of shoving them in my trunk and taking random pictures well, I'll have, the post I'll have to think of what i can shove in my <laughs> trunk <laughs> yeah denise might come too just because oh my gosh that who is... doesn't need another denise <laughs> yeah <laughs> That is so iconic. I, I literally was not expecting that. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to be the best chat ever. <laughs> well, that's it for me. That's all my questions I have for both of you. Um, if you'd like to learn from Ashley, Denise, we have, um, we just had a cameo from Pillow Denise here <laughs> and Meryl. Uh, make sure to join them for their working, playing retreat, artistic play and exploration. Again, for anyone who wants to come, you don't have to be an illustrator. I might have to make a call for programming because I'm sold already just by hanging out with these two this, this afternoon. Um, taking place April 14th through 17th at our beautiful retreat center in the Poconos. You can register on our website at uh, www.highlightsfoundation.org. And lastly, you can uh, purchase Ashley and Meryl's books at our virtual bookshop powered by bookshop.org. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Meryl, for joining us today. And I cannot wait to see how this amazing week pans out. And maybe you'll see me there. So I hope so. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Kat. This was fun. Thanks, Thanks Meryl. Yeah. Thank I look forward to seeing you in the real. Right. Sure. Big hug, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right.